what the dude is my dudes. Um, this is gonna be an odd video that you are not gonna be used to seeing because I'm normally not one in front of camera. But this is a new series that we're going to be doing on Nix and Mix. Doesn't really have a name yet or a legitimate intro. So this is just sort of an introduction video of what this series is going to be. This series is pretty much just going to be me working on a bunch of junk. My junk, um, pretty much junk. Not really, but anything that comes into the shop that uh, Mix decides, hey, you should, that's cool, you should do a video on that, or the big project I have behind said door that I will show you in a minute. But it'll pretty much be a bunch of random videos showing you guys, I guess, how to do some things if you were curious on how to do some things. But mostly me working on a bunch of stuff for behind the scenes videos, projects we do. Um, Blackheart, bunch of random stuff. Uh, probably not a ton of that, but maybe a little bit if I do something interesting. But it's sort of just a, a wrenching series. So for the project I have going on right now that sort of sparked this idea is, it's not a huge project. It is sort of in a way, it itself is enormous. The project, it could become everything required for prep and just general function of it is enormous. But relatively small, unless I break something or need to change it. But I'm gonna bring you guys along to watch that and see that because it's kind of something you wouldn't see too often, especially up here north. What I first got and first started getting I, very, I didn't mention it a lot, I don't think it's actually ever mentioned in the video. But what I got was a 1992, I want to say, Toyota T100 pickup. And that truck, I don't have any videos of it running, because um, it very rarely did. But here's a picture of that truck, a couple pictures of it, I know I have a few. That truck what is what is referred to as a pre-runner. A pre-runner is a pretty much any vehicle that is heavily or lightly off-road modified to pre-run uh, off-road races or a giant sand toy. The name pre-runner came from pre-run racing. They use them to scout the tracks looking for hazards, get a general feel of the roads before taking Full blown race cars onto them, not ex not knowing or expecting what is to come. Most of them are what is referred to as luxury pre runners for bigger race teams. Them things are they're nice. They're they they far exceed any vehicle you can buy from a dealership. Just looks, performance, styling, they're amazing. That was not a luxury pre-runner, that was a you may or may not die pre-runner. The caging inside of it, there's there's two ways to do caging. There's a right way and then there's a way you will die. That cage was done in the way you would die. If that truck were to, if, you, if I were to roll or wreck that truck, it would became a smash tin can full of metal shards everywhere pretty much impaling you from every direction. Not to mention the motor that what was in it was left open for I don't know how long, was full of all kinds of stuff. I put a new motor in that then sort of caught fire but then didn't. But anyway it was a that truck was a pot. I then traded that truck to a guy out in Kansas who I, I, I told him everything about it, on how you couldn't race it, but as it was something that would be used as a daily driver, which it could have been, it just needed the exhaust work, and you could have done it as a daily driver, it would have been perfect. I don't know what ended up happening to it after that, I think he sold it right away, 
there was something he didn't want to deal with on it, so he sold it right away. But I traded him for a 1972 Datsun 521 drift style truck. It was all wheel drive, which I don't know about that scene a whole lot. I would assume all wheel drive would be okay. But the, the turning radius and the way it was built, it, it needed some work, but for a daily driver and to just play around with, that truck was fun. Um, I had no intentions of keeping it a very long time. It was just going to be a quick flip vehicle because free runners and off-road trucks of that style are kind of hard to sell up north here. There's not a big following for them. So I got that truck. Did a little work to it, mostly cosmetic. It really didn't need nothing to mechanical other than the brakes failed on me. But I got that pretty much slammed together and ready to go. I then traded that truck and on top of cash for juice. Juice is behind the door. Behind me. Juice is a 1450 class off-road desert race truck. Now, that style of truck, there is multiple different versions. There's a 2000 class. 2000 class uses primarily leaf spring rear suspension. 1400 class, mostly categorized into 1450, because at that point you're using uh, long travel rear suspension. By right? long travel rear suspension, trailing arms and four link. Crazy amounts of suspension travel underneath it. You, you go from measuring in inches to measuring in yards at that point in suspension travel. Juice's 1450 class. So he has full long travel suspension front and rear. He's running I-beams in front. I-beams not extremely widely used in bigger class race vehicles, but for 1450 class it's actually really common. A lot simpler than A-arms. Um, geometry wise, how it functions can be as little or more complicated as you would like it to be. It's pretty much the go-to for these trucks since they're required to still have framing underneath them. You can't fully tube chassis them. They're required to have a minimum of six feet of stock frame under them. So the requirements for 1450, it is, you have to have frame. There has to be some sort of original stock frame underneath them. Power, um, I could be wrong, I'm not. A professional by the by knowing the classes or doing this by any means power wise I think you're limited to 800 horsepower I want to say I'm not entirely sure I'd have to look into that if I find out I'll have uh, mix put a correction stamp over me for the exact horsepower you're allowed to run juice runs 650 horse at the motor 405 horsepower at the tires and 400 foot pounds of torque at the tires this is on 37 inch mud tires right now with 17 inch full beadlock wheels and also a requirement for the 1450 class is it has to have a metal cab and functioning doors also referred to as door slammer trucks door still has to function. How much of the door remains, it's sort of up to you. But it has to be functioning and represent a pretty much um, stock truck. The entire thing it, from the frame up is all tube chassis. Uh, it currently has two inch, uh, 120 wall, roll cage inside of the truck is all the unpainted is a two inch 120 wall for best in the desert or score not, not score but score legal which is a big off-road sanction most score is mostly um, foreign country racing well foreign from the u.s but it is uh, mexico 
normal. Score is your big races, your Baja 500, your 1000, and your San Felipe. I currently don't have any plans to race those until I do start doing good in the US series, which is best in the desert, or your, your Texas snore or more category of racing. Juice is built to best in the desert, or sorry, score legal uh, parameters, per se. So he can, if you build something to the highest parameter, most of the time you can race lower because their safety requirements are going to be a lot less. For safety stuff, I prefer to do more than less, especially in something like this. When these trucks are designed to go wide open as fast as they possibly can through some pretty jacked up stuff. And the outcomes could not be too well. And it's not pretty. That's going to be a lot of what these videos are going to be. There's a lot of safety mods that I will be doing to the truck. A lot of small stuff, but a lot of really big stuff that seems small. Uh, fire suppression, harnesses, window, or window nets, uh, a few sheet metal work for the radiator to keep the, the, the water and heat off the driver and co-driver. But a little more on Juice. 1450 class, race number 1477. Juice was built by a guy out in Texas for the Texas Series Racing. He was then sold to the guy I bought it from out in California. I don't think he ever raced Juice. He might have done a little little work to him. I don't think he ever raced Juice. Uh, the original builder named him, or named her, my bad. Juice, being a 1450 class truck, has long travel suspension front and rear, I-beams at front, Long travel in the back. Juice is running a full aluminum block LS2. Uh, fuel injected. PSC or PCS. One of the two. Power steering. 37 inch tires with 17 uh, method beadlock wheels. Mastercraft race seats. And they're not in the truck right now. They're actually on the table behind the camera. Simpson 3 inch racing harnesses. Running a 32 gallon fuel cell. All the radiators on the back are for uh, engine cooling, mostly. Transmission, engine oil, cooling. Very necessary to move them in the back rather than the front. These trucks are allowed full contact. You can, what they refer to as a nerf, or run into the back of another truck if you will not move. The trucks have horns. A little different than a normal car horn. The car horns don't work because a lot of the spectators will honk or sort of cheer them on with their car horn. So it's hard to tell if another car is coming behind you and it could just be a spectator. So instead they have equipped them with police or emergency sirens. Very loud and very good way to tell the difference if another racer is coming full bore behind you or some guy is just drunk and partying on the sidelines as you go by. Uh, so Juice does have a siren on it. Uh, multi Multi-function, it can do all kinds of crazy stuff. Most of the lighting on Juice is in the front, multiple different brands. Um, but we are going to be installing a lot more lighting on Juice. I want to really be able to see where I'm going that night. Rather not hit a rock the size of Volkswagen Beetle. A cactus or a cow up in the middle of the field or just run it straight into a ditch would not be recommended. So all of the radiators and cooling are mostly in the back. The ones in the front are for power steering. Um, I think one's engine oil. I'm not 100%. I believe it is engine oil. Engine or trans. Sort of a, a not as important but still important but it's mostly behind KG. Two spare tires go through them things like they are nothing so spare tires are a must uh, juice carries two ideally that's the max amount you want to carry they're mounted as far back as possible to keep the weight towards the back these trucks do become airborne they're like tiny airplanes a lot of the time so you want to keep a lot of your weight back to keep the nose from diving forward so you don't cartwheel a hundred times into a pole the cartwheel into a pole one of these trucks, let me know. That'd be interesting to see because there shouldn't be a pole. But 
So the weight's mounted as far back as possible. Keep your, your weight balanced. It just, it, it performs so much better. Um, Drivetrain wise, got a Sainz, an LS2 full aluminum block, a turbo 400, a built turbo 400 transmission. They can handle a lot. Them transmissions are pretty much bulletproof. A lot of controversy in that, but if you look at every race car that ever runs anything really good and really fast, they're running a turbo 400 trans. As far as I know, they're the best you can get. Uh, most run a Ford 9 inch rear end or a third member. I'm not running a Ford 9 inch rear end or third member. I'm actually running a Ford 10 inch rear end. Way, way beefy. 37 or 40 spline. Again, I'm not looking at the paper, the paper sheet I have for this. I'm just trying to go off memory. But they are huge 300 mil uh, trophy truck axle shafts inside of there. They're, them things are tough. The guy I bought it from said if I could manage to break it, let him know. Because he wants to know exactly what I was doing wrong for that to happen. The sort of delivery on it was done by the guy who built it. Oddball Motorsports down in Texas. They built this truck originally. The wrap is another thing we're going to change. Um, I don't own Oddball Motorsports. I don't know the guy well enough to be a huge sponsor for him. We are going to miniaturize his logo into a racing decal at the one on the back and put it on the back just to sort of pay tribute to him building it. But all of my friends and family are going to be coming up with a new livery. I want to get as many of my friends and family involved to help and design with a lot of this truck just to make it a huge uh, family deal. But it'll be it'll be something pretty cool. Oh, intercom systems rugged. running rugged radios uh, for off road. Super amazing. They have an enormous following. A lot of the trucks run on, from pre runners to full race trucks. Since Juice is just a lower class of a full race truck, is about three steps down from, about three or four steps down from a full trophy truck. Uh, most of the time it goes in order from 2000 class, 1450 class 8, spec class, full trophy, or 6100. Then, then you could have modified versions of 6100, which are then referred to as trick trucks. Uh, trick trucks are just are the same as a 6100, but very flashy. Lots of uh, customized colors, more personalized, not really huge sponsors. Most of them do have huge sponsors, but it's more personalized to the driver than to the sponsor. I currently don't have any sponsors for this truck. Most everything that's being done is coming from me. Hoping to pick up some sponsors would be, would be pretty sweet. Um, Nix and Mix will definitely be on the truck. We're going to make a a sort of modified decal of Nix and Mix to be a racing style decal. Look exactly the same as the Nix Mix logo, but it'll be a little bit flashy for the racing stuff. I haven't done a ton to Juice since I got it. I have rewrapped the headers and exhaust with heat shielding. Um, if it's not already done on a vehicle you have, don't do it. It is not anything good for you. It's actually very bad for exhaust to insulate it. I only insulated the Y pipe and bigger exhaust tube and keep some of the heat out of the cab. It really doesn't harm the exhaust tubing at that section to heat wrap it. It's the headers you have to worry about. Heat wrap holds a lot of heat in. So it very it very quickly fatigues the pipe. You go through a set of headers in a long race, probably one set of race if you run heat wrap. I only rewrap these ones. They didn't look very the, the wrap was coming off or they they've already been damaged, so just to sort of protect them a little more and prolong their life, uh, I rewrap them just to work as a protective layer. 
new set I'm going to get for, for it after a while and put them on. I'm not using that stuff. It, it, it's a mess to work with and it's just not good for them. So pretty much all I've done is wrap the headers in uh, white pipe. Uh, I did a transmission seal. It was leaking when I got it. The guy put a new seal on. It must just not have sat very well or very perfectly because it was leaking. Put that one on and then I installed uh, two catch cans, or two oil catch cans for the vacuum system. It does help out on motors to run, it didn't have, well, to run a, a catch can system. Juice didn't have them originally. I don't know why. They just had them plugged off. For motors that are just normal driving around everyday motors, you don't necessarily need uh, or have to run a vacuum system like that. It, it, you won't harm the motor in any way, but you will build more crankcase pressure. And that's the whole the whole idea behind the system was to eliminate that pressure. You want some positive crankcase pressure it helps the motor, but you don't want a ton. I reinstalled the system on Juice because they just plug the builder or the guy before just capped everything off. Um, to just simplify things, I can imagine not have hoses ran everywhere. But for a motor that's going to be wide open a lot, you're going to build a lot of positive crankcase pressure. Doing so, you dramatically limit the life of your seals. You can blow the seals out every 20 miles if you have too much pressure. It's not good on good. So by capping that system off, you're simplifying everything, but it's also weakening the system itself. So I installed two catch cans and replumbed them into the vacuum system. The catch cans pretty much work as if the truck tilts too far sideways or is upside down and the motor is still running. It's not going to suck oil into the motor and create uh, a runaway system. Most commonly in diesel, um, very rarely ever happens in gas, especially uh, fuel injected. But it just keeps it from burning a lot of oil and flooding itself with oil. So the system will suck in, uh, the, it'll create a vacuum in the system sucking in air, but it brings oil with it. The catch can catches that oil so it doesn't go into the motor through the intake into the combustion chambers. It catches it in that can, you can drain them out later if it starts to get full, too full or you suspect it to get too, or it's getting too full. It just kind of works as a secondary a backup, so you're not uh, just flooding your engine with oil. Most cars don't have catch cans, they just plumb right into the intake, but they're not going to be ran under the same circumstances as yours. So, that's pretty much the basic on juice. There is not a ton. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned either, but juice is a 96 Ford Ranger. Um, that's about all I have on Juice, we're working on an intro and a name for this new series. Um, a lot of it's going to be chaos. I, like I was saying, I'm not a professional in a lot of fields. This is going to be one I know a lot about, but I am not professional at it. So there will be mistakes, goof ups, and just all kinds of stuff going on, which is going to make part of this series pretty good. It's going to be mostly chaos. Um, I'll be normally the one speaking to you guys, talking to you. Mike might come around once in a while. I'll kind of con him into helping me with filming if I need a second hand if we go do a test and tune on it. And maybe help him work on a few other projects we got going on here. It'll be something pretty cool. At least I'm hoping it'll be something pretty cool. And if any of you have ideas, of projects I should do or stuff you want to know more about, uh, fabrication, all kinds of that stuff. Uh, anything on juice you want to know more about, uh, during the video it'll have more of a rundown of what's going on. A lot of it's pretty complicated and kind of weird to look at. Kind of, why is it doing that? And this is why. 
but I'll go more into depth as we start to work on a lot of it and why certain things are the way they are and where it's placed. But thank you guys. Hope you enjoy this kind of intro into the world of this disaster that is going to be a series. <laughs> but, um, we shall see. Have a good one, guys. Sweet Jesus! This has been Nix and Mix. If you enjoyed, please press that subscribe button.